Hey, photographers, subscribers, members. Let's celebrate another orbit around the sun. It will soon be the start of a new year on the modified Julian calendar. It originated in the time of Julius Caesar, although he did not start the current numbering system. Credit for that goes to a monk, Dionysius Exegus. He reset the Diocletian era, which had started 280 years earlier. Dionysius didn't approve and declared the next year would be the year 525, since the incarnation of our Lord. But it's now called the Gregorian calendar, honoring a 16th century pope who reset the schedule of leap years to the system we know today. It is somewhat arrogant and foolish to imagine that all humans on the planet celebrate the same new year, or that we all count our orbits around the sun. In many cultures, it's the orbit of the moon around the earth that is used to combine days into groupings. And even though Western culture honors the concept, month refers to the moon, of course, our months no longer have any connection to the lunar orbit. Many cultures and religions still use the moon as the primary calendar reference. Now, there are not as many calendars as there are countries, cultures, or languages, but there are more than a few. My personal preference is to mark the beginning of the year with the date I associate with the beginning of the school year which also coincides, or at least once coincided, with the start of the television and the football season. As summer returns to fall, we return indoors and renew our focus on our work. In Canada, anyway. Gregorian New Year's Day is traditionally used by Western media to remember and summarize the past year and sometimes to predict the next. It's Gregory's gift, as it means stories can be written in advance and published while the author is staying safe while celebrating this celestial event with the appropriate liquids. And what a strange year it's been, as a global pandemic upset just about everybody's plans. And with 2020 hindsight, here's my list of cameras I thought were the best of the year. Best APS-C all-round camera goes to the Fujifilm X-T4. Sony had some contenders, but the X-T4's video feature set seals it. Best APS-C for video only is the Blackmagic Cinema 6K. It offers a near-pro feature set. Best full frame for stills, Nikon's Z7 II. Some minor tweaks to the nearly as excellent Z7. With Nikon Canada's reviewer loan program on hold, I'm still hoping to get a chance to review this camera. Uh, Sony shows a strong second here, too. Best full frame for video goes to Sony's A7S III. It's an amazing leap ahead. Now, I hope you don't agree, and we can have a lively and civil discussion in the comments. Now, looking ahead to 2021, some predictions are obvious. The sales decline of cameras, along with the hand-wringing and gnashing of teeth in executive offices, will continue. The majority of new cameras will have full-frame sensors. There will be a few APS-C models, even fewer micro four-thirds. Leadership for new and improved features will continue to come primarily from Sony and Fujifilm. Sony will introduce the ability to convert RAW files to JPEG and HEIC in camera. And once again, Fujifilm will release more camera variations than the rest, with tweaks, adjustments, and enhancements to increase their market share. Sony will move most of the video advancements found on the S3 to APS-C models. I'm not sure which. And at least one of their lines will cease to be updated. Might be the 6000 series, more likely the RX10. Across all brands, improvements in stabilization, weather sealing, battery life, and in-body sensor cleaning will continue. The higher and higher ISO trend will end. 
New cameras will instead have more lower ISOs, 60, 51, 36, 24, some will go as low as 17.5. And commenting on this trend will drive the majority of YouTube photography creator videos in 2021 with clickbait titles like, How Low Can Sony Go? Nikon Lowers the Bar Once Again. Camera size will not get materially larger or smaller, but grip size will increase. And at least one manufacturer will release a memory foam grip that conforms to your hand. Uh, more cameras will include dual, even triple card slots. XQD and SD cards are likely on their way out, but that process will take several years. CF Express is ascendant and will appear in more models. No new card formats will be introduced in 2021. Uh, cards that you don't need to put in the camera won't come until 2022. You'll just carry it in a pocket and images will be transferred from the camera wirelessly. However, I'm also predicting that models with integrated memory up to 512 gigabytes will arrive with no card slots. They'll have huge, super fast burst buffers and support video data rates over 500 megabits. Those cameras will also support 5G and back up all files to the cloud, where they will be indefinitely stored, as long as you pay $10 a month. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and camera apps will continue to be flaky, although that will become the primary way to install firmware upgrades. And although I'd love to have a full menu emulation app on my phone, that will not happen. 3D and 360 will attempt to come back in 2021 in a combined format called 3D60. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Both are dead. Nailed to the perch dead. All new cameras will have updated and improved menus, thanks to the work of consumer design advocates. User-focused designers will also move the menu button on all cameras to the right side. In-camera menus will be editable XML files so that you can reorganize them to your needs and preferences yourself. LCD screens will increase in pixel density, brightness, and size until they're the equal of smartphones. But they won't have a back-facing lens. The sales flop of 2020 will be voice-controlled cameras. That won't be successful until you can say, Hey Fuji, take the photo as the horse's front legs just cleared the trestle. Light meters will be the most popular accessory purchase Models that include an X in the product name will be the most successful. Arbitrary video time limits won't be seen on any models in 2021, and inexpensive cameras that only do stills with physical manual controls will finally arrive. Looking ahead to 2022, camera hardware and firmware will be sold separately, and as a result, you'll be able to acquire the firmware for your camera from Google, Amazon, or Adobe as part of Creative Suite, each for a monthly subscription fee. So if you don't plan to shoot any photos in November, you'll be able to save 10 bucks. In 2022, you'll be saving $12, looking ahead to 2024, uh, 15. <laughs> and again, please let me know what I've missed by commenting on the improvements that you're hoping for in 2021. Well, that's it for cameras. But if you're interested in calendars, here's my annual calendar comedy sketch. Although by comedy, I mean sarcasm and irony. I used to do this routine more frequently. I once did it on Canada AM. And then afterward, I was contacted and asked to be a consultant on next year's calendar. I declined, preferring to defer to someone with real expertise. It shows you how easy it is to miss sarcasm. Well, I went to all of Canada's big five banks and asked for a free calendar. Last year, I ended up with five calendars. This year, I ended up 60% disappointed. Only the TD Bank, which I call the Toronto Dominion Bank, and RBC, which I call the Royal Bank, had calendars. 
Toronto Dominion's calendar is a environmentally reduced size and features art from the bank's corporate art collection. There are paintings, photographs, mixed media, as well as stills from a video. Credits are provided under the image, as well as on a separate page with all the images. All 12 months are included, two pages for each month. However, lunar phases are not observed. The previous and the next month are displayed on each page. That's handy. And a list of events is provided for each month, a total of 71, including civic, religious, and cultural observances. Eight are highlighted in the bank's favorite color, green. The ones observed as holidays by most Canadians in most Canadian provinces. A page at a glance 2022 calendar is provided and promotional content is found on the back page. The Royals calendar is full or slightly larger size and includes 13 months. January 2022 is provided for procrastinators. Each page features a photograph that bleeds onto the calendar page. A matte paper is used, which makes the photographs look slightly dark and dull. The photographs alternate between Canadian and international scenes. Text provides background for the image and also details the royal's history in that location. Uh, there are no photo credits. I guess they license them from stock. No lunar phases, no previous and next month, but the bank's social links are provided on each page. There are 73 date events noted for 2021. Again, civic, religious, and cultural. Although the Royal also marks sponsored events like a golf tournament and financial events like the RSP deadline. It would have been a little more useful to indicate the tax filing deadline. Now, there's no indication which days are observed as days off. Now, the back page has a 2022 calendar, but it's upside down, according to the hole punch. Banks are not your only option. Now, as long as you're not experiencing lactose intolerance or observing a vegan diet, you may find the free calendar provided by the Dairy Farmers of Canada an interesting alternate. It's in portrait mode, and you can put this one up right away. It includes December 2020, so 13 months. Matte paper, so again, a little dull. The photographer, Jonathan, Jonathan Balaski, and the stylists are credited. Uh, moon phases are included. 79 events are observed, but many of them are dairy-related, like wine and cheese month in July, and I'll bet you didn't know that. October 15 is Cheese Curd Day. However, Fête Nationale du Poutine is observed on April 11th in La Belle Provence, not on the calendar, which marks that day as Cheese Fondue Day. Each month has its affiliation. March is both Nutrition Month and Agriculture Literacy Month. Hopefully that's not a conflict. Each month features a dairy-centric recipe and indicates the produce that's in season. Rutabagas are in season in February. My favorite month is always February. This year, the recipe is Black Forest Cake. Thankfully, the recipe is rutabaga-free. Now, I can't wait for Kim to make that on Valentine's Day. <laughs> then, two days later, I'll be creping up some Suzettes on Shrove Tuesday. Now, there are fun facts. In May, uh, probably in honor of Sanco de Mayo, which is not about mayonnaise, but you, anyway, you'll discover that nachos were invented in 1943 by the wives of American military servicemen in Piedras Negras, Mexico. I didn't know that interesting alternate fact. Wikipedia credits Ignacio Anaya Garcia, a chef in Piedras Negras, as the inventor in 1940. Ignacio's nickname was Nacho, and his, the dish was originally called Nacho's Special. International Day of the Nacho is celebrated on October 21st, which oddly is not Chef Ignacio's birthday. That's August the 15th. 
which has been celebrated with a Google Doodle. The milk calendar doesn't observe either his birthday or Dia del Nacho on August the 15th. Uh, lots more feature pages promoting Canadian agriculture, a produce availability chart for the fridge, two pages on entertaining with Canadian brie, and four pages devoted to French translations of the recipes. If you'd like a free calendar, check with your bank. Although real estate agents and elected representatives are also potential sources. Let me know if you find a good one. Now, finally, in the spirit of the season, my best wishes for the year 2021, according to Dionysius. I hope that 21 brings you, your family, your colleagues and friends, health, happiness and prosperity. Chef Nacho, Feliz Navidad. Sorry about the slight from the Canadian dairy farmers. I'm going to pencil you in. Thanks for your culinary contribution. And thank you for watching. Happy New Year. Let's make some noise.